not compare your dog to social media ever because that goes for everybody out there <laughs> you are not seeing the tr you're not seeing everything and it's not even like they're doing it on purpose it's just that you can't see everything that's going on hello beautiful Thank you for clicking on today's video. If you're new here, my name is Erica. Just off screen here is my service dog, Zion. And today I am joined by the wonderful, beautiful Alexis <laughs> and her service dog, Atlas. Hey, hi. <laughs> hi, other people. <laughs> I am so excited to have this team here for the continuation of our interviewing a service dog handler series, getting to know all of the different types of handlers out there. And so could you just introduce yourself to the audience? My name is Alexa. This is my service dog, Atlas. He's a multi-purpose service dog. He's almost eight years old, actually. He is a rescue. He's from the shelter. Is Atlas your first service dog? He is my first service dog. Gosh, it's been like 10 years now, which is crazy. But about 10 years ago, I was looking into service dogs when I first started having a lot of health problems. So you rescued Atlas when he was just six months old. And what was it like bringing him home as a puppy? It was so hectic. Uh, he was so hyper, so smart, like constantly outsmarting me, one step ahead of me all the time. Blew my mind. Like this dog blows my mind. Did you know that you wanted to train him to be a service dog or did you fall into that because he was so smart? I did not get him as a service dog. He was never temperament tested or anything like that. I realized how smart he was and I started doing more research on different types of service dogs and tasks that they could perform. And I started thinking like, well, maybe I could try to teach him a couple things and like if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Here we are eight years later and he's still working and he's like, he's just amazing. It's crazy. I can't believe it. I really can't. I love that. And so you have probably been through so much with him as your service dog. I can only imagine eight years of working. And if you were to like pick a moment in time that was your favorite with him, was it like puppyhood stage? maybe like adolescent, or are you really happy that he's like a fully trained service dog and y'all are like chill in your schedule now? My favorite time is now. It's so <laughs> nice having a fully trained dog. I just want anyone out there who's training like a puppy or something, just be patient. It's so worth it. What's been your favorite part of being a service dog handler? I think my favorite part of being a service dog handler is that Atlas really gives me purpose. Like he's the reason to get up every day and keep going and to be my best self for him it's just a reason to live a reason to get up a reason to go for walks a reason to leave the house like I didn't even leave the house before he was working and he makes going to the store okay just life-changing truly you don't realize it till you kind of fall down the rabbit hole everything that they do for you and like even yeah. as a service dog handler I still try to like maybe make one outing without my service dog sometimes just to remind myself how hard it is to not have them sometimes yes. I, yep, same. and so I'm tearing up when you're talking like that because yeah just having that companionship having that purpose having that reason to wake up every day something you have to feed someone that's yeah. going to give you eye contact and tell you hey yes. mom get your butt up go bring me for a walk get up let's yes. do training zion has little buttons that he'll press and I he love, I wanted, yes i love that <laughs> he's got a voice and i love that i've given him that, that voice he's staring at me because he knows i'm getting anxious now because i'm like would you feel comfortable sharing how your disabilities have, you know, changed or grown over the past eight years with Atlas? Yes, actually. Um, so I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease 10 years ago, and then I developed chronic fatigue syndrome. About four years ago, I developed POTS, which is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, but as well as endometriosis. My health just keeps getting worse and worse, which sucks, but thank God for this dog because he's been able to adapt to my disabilities and learn new tasks with these new illnesses. And it's just like amazing to me because he knows like 15 or 16 tasks now and he, he's still learning new stuff. He's, he's about to be eight years old and he is still learning. We are still improving. Well, and that's something I've experienced with Zion. I got him for my initial disability, which was mostly right. psychiatric. The more I had him, I started having heart issues. I had my open heart surgery. And so his needs had to develop with me. We had to grow together. He had to learn how to help me with my wheelchair and walk next to yeah. a walker. 
And so you get thrown like all of these curveballs that you aren't really expecting sometimes. Atlas just learned to walk, like last year, learned to walk with a walker. And that was something new for both of us. I never in my life thought I'd get a walker, but here we are. And so I was, you know, like, how is he going to do? But he's great. He was great. It's just like, <laughs> you know, a cart to him or something. So and it really made me see, like, all that work we did years ago at the beginning has paid off because now he can pretty much do anything. And what has your experience been being a young service dog handler, being a young female, what has that been like? Challenging, uh, mostly due to the public. I'm sure as you know, when you don't look sick or you know, if you're not using your uh, mobility aids, for example, and people tend to look at me and think that I'm healthy, I'm perfectly fine, why do I need this dog? He must be a fake service dog. For example, I can't stand in line. So when I'm standing in line at a store or something, I'm usually like I will kneel or like even sit on the floor and that's embarrassing but when I have my service dog and I'm sitting on the floor in line I don't feel as embarrassed because people are like okay there's you know she probably has like a health issue something <laughs> that me and you can really relate on is having that postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome and the heart issues I can't yeah. stand up for long periods of time I have to squat I spend my time me on the too. floor I'm on the floor right now baby <laughs> this is my this is my domain <laughs> having that service dog you're able to kind of cope a little bit yeah. better with those symptoms having a service dog is part of your treatment plan but I know as a POTS patient I have other tools in my tool belt and so what are some other tools that you've used to help fight specifically the POTS let's talk about that so I have a port so I get um IV saline and lactated ringers four days a week so I do like four liters a week and that's due to low blood volume. So there are different, I think there's three different types of POTS. I have hypovolemic POTS, so I have low blood volumes. Basically when you have low blood volume, um, my stomach doesn't get blood to it, my digestive system isn't getting blood, my heart, my lungs, my brain, none of it is getting blood. Without treatment, it's just like, you know, your red blood cells carry oxygen throughout your body and when you don't have enough blood and your blood's just kind of like pooling at the bottom of your body, all your vital organs that are up here are not getting oxygen and they're not getting blood. So I can't breathe. You know, my heart isn't working properly. I cannot think. I cannot see. It's, I can't eat. You know, I think it's kind of a common grouping of symptoms or comor comorbidities that a lot of us have. We have the POTS. We have the digestive issues. We either have like gastroparesis yes. or a type of yep. Crohn's or IBS. And those kind of yep. go together, but then also we have the fainting issues and we have the yep. blood pressure issues. And yes, the blood pressure, that's the other thing, yeah, just plummet. And my blood pressure is so low all the time. It's like, I'm like, are you alive? Like, I'll be checking it and I'm like, hello? <laughs> so having a port, it is like an actual operation that you had to have. And it's something that I've talked to my doctors about because I have to have my blood taken once a week and I've had a couple veins going now and they do my hands sometimes and you only got so yep. many places that they can go exactly. until they start going into your feet. And personally, yep. I do not like feet IVs. Uh, and when you were getting all of this done, was Atlas there with you? How did you go about having a service dog and being in all of these pr procedures? Yeah, so, um... A port, yeah, a port's an actual surgery. You're put under anesthesia, they make a small incision, and then they place the port cast underneath your skin and then stitch it up. And then they thread a tube into the biggest vein of your heart. And so, yeah, you're fully under anesthesia. I didn't bring Atlas with me because I was under anesthesia and there's obviously no one to take care of him. So he just stayed at home. Um, of course, I would love to have him, but there's some places that I don't bring my service dog, not for an admission. He's never been with me for an admission. Uh, he'll go to the hospital with me if I need, like, treatments and stuff. Yeah, so that's kind of how I am with Zion. Like, I don't do overnight stays with him unless I am the guest. Like, I've done overnight stays in the hospital as a guest, but not as the patient. Because you can take him out and stuff. Like, who's going to yeah. take... I don't trust, like, some random nurse taking my dog outside the hospital. Like, are And it ain't their me? job. It ain't their job. No, it it's really not isn't. their job. It's not their dog. <laughs> like... But with him being there, it's like, all right... We got this you know like I'll, we're gonna be okay and they make it fun because they're happy their little tails are wagging they're excited to go to walmart or the doctor and it's like you know the stuff that we find so irritating and just like they make the little things in life better and even going to the doctor is fun because i'm not thinking about 
I mean, I am thinking about my appointment, but more so I'm thinking about Atlas. Like, Mm -hmm. okay, cool. This is awesome. We get to go to the doctor. Um, What can we work on today? And, you know, can we use this opportunity to do some training around the building or training around the hospital? And, you know, hey, let's go get a coffee after. This makes it a little bit better. Like A little bit better. It's (laughs) such a hard life. It is so isolating. I can't drink and, like, party anymore. Just having someone there for you have that has your back that you know cares about you and you care about them and something to focus on just is life-changing, you know? I what? think I'll, I will always have a service dog. until Unless there's a cure for me, I will always have a service dog. And I think that's something that kind of goes understated. And I think that's why a lot of us get so angry when somebody does fake a service dog. Because that value that they bring to our lives is insurmountable. It's nothing compared to a pet dog when you are disabled and you are living with mental distortions or you're yeah. having to go to the hospital and get these operations. Like, yeah. it, it goes beyond just the level of emotional support. And, yeah, they do give you emotional support, and they're great at that. But it yeah. goes yeah. so much further. Oh, my God. Every day I'm scared I'm going to get a blood, another blood clot from my poor and... I don't know. It's just so hard. Like, I just don't even have the words. Well, and I think that's why I really relate, is we're both heart patients, and, you know, I'm always worried what's going to be tomorrow. And I think that's a journey that everybody has to go on on their own. But you come to terms with your diagnosis eventually, and it's not always the easiest, and it can be very isolating. I want this YouTube channel. I want my social media. Like, I want to build a community of support. We have a common struggle and a common enemy, and Mm -hmm. we don't need to be going against each other when we're all fighting our own battles. I, I, like, seriously, when I found you, I was just like, oh, I'm not alone, and it's, it's so cliche, like, you're not alone, but truly, truly, truly knowing that there is someone else that, like, is dealing with these same struggles that you can talk to, life save, like, save my life, save my life, I... I was so depressed before I found this community. Truly, like truly, I'm so grateful for my friends and my Yayan, the good boy. Well, and I really relate to what you're saying because like, when I got my di- It's okay, Bubba. Just my stand-up mirror that was leaning against the wall. Oh no, is it a break? No, I, so I had put his pallet in front of the door to pad out some of the sound, and so it fell on that. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, but I really relate to what you're saying, because when I got diagnosed with heart disease, I was 24 years old, and I'm like, well, surely, if I have this diagnosis, there's plenty of other people. I'm, I'm young, I'm in America, there's got to be other people with this. And I googled it, and then I start seeing very rare, third world country, and I start trying to look up stuff, and there's nothing out there. Like, there's a few medical things, but, like, nobody out there that really has this heart disease until I made this community and started searching. Found someone in my hometown that had the same surgery. I found one of my best friends that had the same surgery wow. twice. <laughs> and so wow. it's Isn't that amazing. Isn't that just so amazing. It really is. That's and incredible. it makes you feel valid and like oh I'm not the only one that's like really suffering with this and that commonality is why I have loved the community but I think it's time to stir the tea (laughs) I was just gonna say my only thing is do not compare your dog to social media ever because that goes for everybody out there (laughs) <laughs> you are not seeing the tr- you're not seeing everything and it's not even like they're doing it on purpose it's just that you can't see everything that's going on i love that you share zion's like mistakes like just seeing even zion like sniff something in the store makes me feel better because like they're dogs like i don't know just like we do need to hold them to a high standard yes we do they need to be held to a high standard especially when they're in public but at the same time, I almost think some people's standard is so high that they're expecting their dog to be like a robot or something. And I feel bad for these dogs. You know, the dog even steps out of a heel or looks the wrong way and they're, you know, harsh correcting. And it's like, damn, like, this is a breathing, living creature with thoughts and emotions. And maybe they're tired. Maybe, I don't know. Like, mm-hmm. 
That's something I tell my friends all the time. Like, we do meetups. They're yeah. a dog. They're not a robot. I'm not judging yeah. you because this is the thing. Yeah. The law gives clear way. If your dog makes a mistake, you have reasonable correction. Like, you yeah. are the handler. You are the trainer. Like, yeah. you have to tell them what to do. And if yeah. they do something that you didn't tell them, you just have to tell them to do something else. But exactly. if you don't do that is where I have the problem. But if your dog steps out of a heel and you say, hey, come back into the heel... Yeah. Your dog's great. That's all that yeah. I cared about. Exactly, exactly. And I mean, the ADA doesn't even say your dog needs to be in like a competition heel, like yes. right, you know, like, absolutely. As long as as long as your dog's under control, not you know running around the store. What I would say is I I'm more relaxed now with him. Like mm-hmm. I used to be that person that was like, oh my god, he just looked at someone like, or he's he's looked at a barking dog. Oh my god, like he's you know. Mm-hmm. I'm failing, but now it's like, well, no shit, he's looking at a barking dog, like, this, this dog's yelling at him mm-hmm. from the cart, and of course he's going to look and say, like, is you know, where's this threat coming from? Well, and that's something that I take very seriously, and a lot of other people don't agree with me on this, but my dog is trained to alert to people around me. He is trained to tell me when people are in my car, around my car in the parking lot. He is trained to that. look at people. And so, yes, your dog might have a focused heel and you want them to give eye contact with you. And I totally support that. And I want my dog checking in on with me too. And he does check in every few feet. But his job is not to look at me. His job is so I don't have to be hypervigilant. I don't have to be PTSD triggered because I know that he's going to let me know if someone comes in my space. Exactly. Same here. I also have PTSD. I I know I haven't touched on that in this conversation we've had but i've had ptsd since i was three it's been a lifelong struggle atlas that's the first thing that he was ever trained for was ptsd so i also need him to kind of be my eyes i i have him like watch my back and stuff so Mm -hmm. he's not always looking at me like he'll be behind me sometimes he's he's walking in front of me sometimes you know also i need him to navigate because a lot sometimes i can't see so if i you know i hold on to his like handle he needs to be watching for us. He needs to be paying attention to where I'm going so I'm not running into things and people. Absolutely. And that's why it's your disability and your service yeah. dog. I know. We're all so different. And I think that's, at least for me, something I like about training my own service dog is that I was able to just, you know, mm-hmm. so get it so specific to what I need. Well, I want to switch gears just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah? All right. We're going to do a quick fire yeah. round, Okay. Just real quick, yeah. these questions are going to be all about Atlas. Ready? Okay. Snow or rain? Snow. Walking or fetch? Walking, for sure. Being pet or being brushed? Pet. Prefers humans or dogs? Humans. Leash or off leash? Leash. Leash your dogs, people. Harness or vest? Harness. I love it. I have loved having you on this episode of this series, and I love you and Atlas. Y'all's Instagram is awesome. 18 plus, you guys, but go check them out. Uh, Thank you. At VenusXAlexa. Go check them out and support them. Is there any advice that you would give to a new service dog handler or maybe somebody who's looking at getting a service dog? It's a slow crawl, not a race. Don't be in a huge rush to have your dog fully trained. Be prepared to be training for the dog's life. I definitely knew I want to say don't compare your dog to social media because that's something that I used to do that, like, oh, it's not good. Mm. My <laughs> The other advice I would have is to learn your local law. You are going to want to know the law, the ADA law, and your local law, and the special law, like the back of your hand, because the general public does not know about service dog laws, and you're going to have to stand up for yourself way more times than you should have to. Learn the law. Learn your rights have it with you and like you have to be your own advocate you have to advocate for your dog it's hard but knowledge is power so the more knowledge you have the better truly well and the state laws can vary so much from federal law and you need to be able to like memorize that and repeat it back to people because i can't yes. tell you how many security guards i've had to educate yeah. and employees oh, yeah. and so it helps to be an advocate for the whole community We have had so much fun with this conversation and this interviewing a service dog handler series is just getting started. Season one will be coming to a close at the end of this month, 
but I am going to be putting most of my efforts into this series, so stay tuned for many more awesome service dog teams. Go support Alexa and Atlas, and thank you guys so much for being here today. I hope you all stay happy, stay healthy, and I will see you in the next one.